Hey friends, welcome to week one of Your Own Image. I am so excited to finally be putting this out into the world. Your Own Image is a four week course where we will create mixed media art journal pages that all start with selfies. This is a concept that I've wanted to do since I first started art journaling and I've been developing and planning this course for a little over a year now. So I'm really glad you're watching and I hope you'll stick around for the whole thing. All four weeks are going to be 100% free and they're hosted right here on YouTube. I'm not even asking for your email address for a mailing list or anything like that. I do hope that if you're interested, you'll subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you'll receive notifications when the future installments are posted. I also welcome comments and feedback on the teaching style and the lesson format because online courses are something I want to do more of this year. So if there's anything I can explain better or film in more detail, please do let me know. Each week's lesson will be presented in real time with a voiceover. And in this first week, we're going to cover materials and the whys and hows of selfies, including how best to take selfies for this particular course and how to print them. So let's get started. While the pieces we'll work on can be created on loose pieces of sturdy paper, I highly recommend working in an art journal. The bigger, the better. The paper does not have to be high quality, just thick enough that acrylic paint will not soak through. You'll need a stash of collage scraps, old book pages, magazine clippings, and pieces with blocks of color. Scraps you created yourself are great for this. You'll also need scissors to cut them to size. Acrylic craft paints are inexpensive and dry matte, making them perfect for working in an art journal. Grab your favorite paintbrush for getting messy, or use alternative methods of putting paint to paper. For glue, I like to use regular matte gel or a conventional glue stick depending on the size of the piece. We'll use several types of white markers. They do not have to be opaque. And we'll be prepping our collage background for one piece with plain gesso. And of course, the most important ingredient for these pieces is your selfies. Why selfies? Firstly, because I flipping love selfies. They're one of my favorite forms of expression. I use them in my journaling all the time. Secondly, because selfies get a bad rap. They're easy to mock, but mocking them overlooks the fact that for hundreds, if not thousands of years, self-portraits were a staple of traditional art. I can only imagine most of those artists would have traded a limb for the same access we enjoy to technology that lets them capture their image and do whatever they want to it for art purposes. The third reason is that I run a nonprofit that exists to boost adolescent girls' self esteem. And one of the things that has come up in some of the very open discussions that we've had with those girls is that in many cases, their self image is hereditary. They overhear their moms talking about aspects of themselves that they hate, and then the daughters internalize that they should hate those features too. And I'm talking about girls in this case because that's the focus of my organization, but self-image is by no means limited to women. It's a bleak picture, but it's not hopeless. I absolutely believe that working with your own image in artwork changes your perceptions. You begin to see yourself as art. Which brings me to the challenge portion of this video. I challenge you at each stage of this process, be it taking selfies or editing them or collaging with them, to make zero negative statements about your appearance, out loud or otherwise. This is really hard, but I would never ask you to do anything that I'm not doing myself. And I made a pledge when my daughter was born to eliminate negative self-talk from my life. And I've continued that way for the past seven years. And if I can do it, you can too. So let's get to the practical side of selfie taking. For the pieces in this course, selfies with plain backgrounds work best. Any open wall makes a great backdrop. Try to use only one light source and, if possible, make it natural sunlight. Avoid using the backwards facing camera on your phone as this produces lower quality images. For the best quality, turn your phone screen away from you and use a selfie stick or tripod with remote. Try not to put too much energy into making your selfies Instagram worthy and glamorized. Smiling is not required either. All the necessary image editing can be done with apps directly on your phone. You can even experiment with the built-in filters and editing tools in your phone's photo folder. Sometimes subtle changes can make a photo.
I'll list my favorite third-party editing apps and filters in the description. In this example, I'm using Afterlight 2. This is my selfie for week three of this course, and I want it to be saturated with color, so I'm starting with Afterlight's filter options. Then I'm going to use the gradient tool to add color to what was originally a relatively monochrome image. For the week three project, I really like having an image that's highly saturated with a lot of juicy color. For this course, we will use both laser and inkjet printed images, but it's fine if you have access to only one of those. I print on matte photo paper, cardstock, lightweight watercolor paper, and cotton resume paper. I've also had great luck printing on vellum and textured scrapbooking paper, so experiment with those in your home printer. For this first week, your assignment is to take an assortment of selfies, facing the camera, in profile, and full body. Next week, we will use the profile selfie in a phrenology-inspired collage piece. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in week two.